right, my friends, Big Bill Anderson's Death Tour is right back at you here. And uh, I know you might think this is an unusual spot. I'm at a U-Haul rental office here. And the reason I'm here is for many years, I passed by this intersection here at 40th Street and Camelback right there in front of us. I always looked around and I saw this painting on the wall right there and there's a plaque right there next to it and I never took the time until just a few days ago to stop and see what this building is or what that signifies and to my amazement you learn something new every single day if you use your brain a little bit and what this building is and who this gentleman is that's right here on the wall that is Tony DeMarco former world's welterweight boxing champion in the 50s this building here used to be his bar and it was named the living room cocktail lounge actually Tony DeMarco's living room and for 15 years he ran a bar here I'm going to tell you more about this story I think it's pretty amazing uh, Tony DeMarco moved to Phoenix from Boston after he retired he moved here in 1963 and in 1968 he opened up his bar right here inside this building that's now a U-Haul rental yard he moved here because his son had asthma and he wanted to help his son breathe a little bit easier in this beautiful Arizona air here drier climate so he bought the silver silver poodle cocktail lounge that used to be here and renamed it the Tony DeMarco living room it was more of a piano type bar and uh, I'm going to tell you more about this building and what it housed. And uh, inside here, Tony had his boxing memorabilia on the walls and his championship belt. And I think this is just a really super cool location. You can see this plaque here. I would... Uh, show you this in better lighting and with some photos and tell you more about this and this beautiful painting of Tony done here on the walls and we'll see if we can get inside here also I guess we can't. So this was Tony DeMarco's bar. Quite fascinating gentleman. And I'm going to tell you more about his life in Boston, his boxing career. Follow me, my friends. Tony DeMarco was born on January 14, 1932, with the name Leonardo Leota to Sicilian immigrants. He grew up in the North End neighborhood of Boston. Due to the minimum age of 18 in order to box professionally, Leota used the birth certificate of Tony DeMarco so that he could compete. DeMarco had his first professional fight when he was 16 years old. On October 21st, 1948, he knocked out Mester Jones in one round. DeMarco fought the top fighters in his division during the 1950s and defeated top contenders and champions like Teddy Red Top Davis, Chico Vihar, and Don Jordan. 
The highlight of his career came on April 1, 1955, when he scored a technical knockout over Johnny Saxton in the 14th round of their title bout to capture the world's welterweight title. Despite winning many bouts to become champion, he is best remembered for his two championship bouts with Hall of Famer Carmen Basilio in 1955. Both fights were toe-to-toe -to -toe slugfests with several ebbs and flows that kept the fans at the edge of their seats. Both fights ended in a 12th round with DeMarco suffering a TKO. In their first bout, DeMarco was the defending champion. He risked his title by taking on Basilio, who was the top-ranked contender. Although Basilio prevailed, the fight was so exciting that the pair were rematched. The second fight was almost a carbon copy of the first, with Basilio wearing down DeMarco, but not before a wicked DeMarco left hook had Basilio out on his feet. DeMarco was unable to capitalize on this advantage and lost the match in a 12th round TKO. DeMarco's legacy is an undying part of Boston's history. Training under Boston greats such as Frankie Waters, DeMarco was able to sell out the Boston Garden, breaking attendance records. Mayor Thomas Menino even honored DeMarco with a street named after him in Boston's famous North End. The street, which is perpendicular to Atlantic Avenue, is named Tony DeMarco Way. DeMarco has received many honors, including the induction in the official National Italian American Hall of Fame in Chicago. Looking back on his career, DeMarco remarked, mainly I consider myself a slugger. DeMarco once fought on the undercard to Brocky Marciano. In his last bout, DeMarco won a 10-round decision over Stefan Ruddle in Boston on February 6, 1962. DeMarco ended his career with a total record of 71 fights with 58 wins, 33 of those by KO, 12 losses, and one draw. Tony was known under a couple different nicknames during his boxing career. They were the Flame and Fury of Fleet Street and the Boston Bomber. DeMarco capitalized on his fighting fame and celebrity connections to promote his living room lounge here in Phoenix. Musicians performed nightly, usually on piano, with customers often crooning along. Buzz about the champ's lair spread and bar attracted such stars as country singer Charlie Pride. Six-time world heavyweight wrestling champion Lou Thez lived only a few blocks away and would stop in periodically and talk with Tony. In a Phoenix Magazine story on DeMarco, he stated, We had a lot of regulars. A few couples who met there even went on to get married. DeMarco boasted. The bar also turned into a bean towner hangout. Boston Celtics coach Tom Heisom and announcer Johnny Most stopped by whenever their town was in Phoenix. Tony Canicliero, a star of the Boston Red Sox baseball team, came by the lounge to sing. Known for his friendliness and charm, DeMarco spent 15 years ensuring his nightclub lived up to its motto where good people meet. The bar never had any major fights, just a few heated ailments, says the fighter. I think my world championship welterweight belt displayed behind the cash register cooled off any explosive situations. But tragedy stu struck in 1975 when DeMarco's son Vincent, then only 14, died after being hit by a car here in Phoenix. It was a devastating blow that flattened the former title holder. The reason we moved to Phoenix was to help my son's asthma, but we still considered Boston home, DeMarco said. Business was down and the lounge had only about three more years on its lease. DeMarco sold the living room lounge in 1982 and moved back to Boston to become an officer for the Massachusetts House of Representatives. He retired in 1998.
The west facing wall of the store that you see here is adorned with a colossal image of DeMarco in his boxing prime. DeMarco says, my wife Dottie and I were visiting Phoenix a few years ago and saw it, much to our amazement. U-Haul never contacted me about it, and I was really touched by the gesture. A, stat a statue of DeMarco unveiled on October 20th, 2012, at the corners of Hanover and Cross Streets in Boston's historic North End, was designed by famed sculptor Harry Weber, and a full-length documentary by filmmaker Marino Amoruso based on DeMarco's autobiography, Nardo, Memoirs of a Boxing Champion, is in the works. Tony DeMarco is also featured in The Flame and the Fury of Fleet Street, a segment of the documentary of Boston's North End, an Italian-American story. DeMarco was also inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame as a member of the class of 2019. Tony lives in Boston and as of today is 87 years old. So my friends, sometimes you never know what cool historic spots are right in your own backyard. Like I said before, I passed this corner for 20 years and never took the time to learn a little bit of history. But finally I did. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And I do appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to watch my video. And please ring the notification bell, subscribe to my channel. And my friends, thank you and adios.